how to build and distribute your own C application on Nix without getting it into Nix packages. Here's what we're building today. The ultimate goal is I give someone this little snippet, they can paste it into their config file. We'll copy this, paste it into my Nix OS config, and then under system packages, I'm going to add sample app C. Now run sudo nixos rebuild switch. And once that's done running, you have this sample app C executable that you can use. So that's the goal. If you clone the page key education repo, go into that 176 folder and go to sample app C, you can do nix build and it's gonna build a result folder. And you can do dot slash result slash bin slash sample app C. This is our local build. If you go into the Nix OS folder and do a Nix build, you get the same executable that you can run, but you'll notice it's building from GitHub. So we're gonna talk through all the steps of getting to the point where we can do this. You can build either locally or from GitHub. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to create the simplest possible C application. We're gonna run it in Nix OS. Local only is actually very easy to do. You'll see how that works. And we'll see how you can use default.nix to test whether it would work on Nix OS without rebuilding your whole system. We will use that technique to iterate quickly so that we can figure out how to build and install from GitHub source code without having to go through Nix packages. I almost forgot to mention why even bother? Well, this is page key and we're gonna to try to take back tech. Tech is good, it makes life easier, and big companies build tech, which is good. We wouldn't have the smartphone or other things like that otherwise. However, we don't understand the tech we're using, including the smartphone in our pocket. We depend on those big companies to provide that to us, which might be bad. So the solution is to learn about tech, build things ourselves, and become independent again. And throwback to back in the 50s and 60s, I feel like I have this romantic image in my mind of people working on their own cars. This is actually you working on your email server with your friend who's working on his or her file storage solution right in the comfort of their own homes no data centers nothing it's great so if that's what you're interested in keep watching here's the directory structure for our sample app the main thing is main.c has the source code and default.nix is where all the actions happening as far as how to package this up on nix here's the source code for main.c it doesn't get much simpler than this it's just a hello world in c so not much to say here Here's default.nix, so I feel much more comfortable with this now. I will explain it because I didn't really know what was going on here. So you'll see this, this is the start of a function, basically. So you have an argument, packages, and if it's not defined, it's going to be a default value of import the system nix packages. And then these little curly brackets are like calling a function. So you use the import function on nix packages, and then you call that function. And then you have the end of the curly brace and a colon, so that indicates that we're starting the function implementation. What follows that is an expression. So this is one expression and it is the return value. So whatever is returned by make derivation, this built-in function to Nix packages, is what we return from our default.nix function. And in this case, it's a derivation that gets turned into an element in the Nix store, which is what we want. Inside of make derivation, we have pname and version, just some basic metadata. We have the dot slash source directory. We're gonna mess with this later, but for now we'll keep it simple. Native build inputs, these are inputs that are only needed during build time. After it's built, you don't need them to run the application. And then we define the build phase where we run GCC to compile our main.c and output it to pname. And then when we install it, we're going to make a directory in the output folder and put it in there. So we're in the sample app C directory with our C source code and the default.nix you just saw. If you run nix build, it works and we can do dot slash result slash bin slash sample app C and see our output. So as it turns out, we can already run this application in Nix OS. We just have to add this to our configuration.nix, add sample app C to your list of system packages that you have installed, and then we just have to put an overlay, which means we're overriding what Nix packages has by default. We're gonna add our own variable called sample app C, and then we will call package, and then you just pass the full path to that default.nix file that we just wrote. So you're gonna have to change this because mine is home Steve repos. Wherever you clone down that education repo, just put that full system path there. Then you're gonna run Nixos rebuild switch and we will see that that command sample app C becomes available on your system. If you're not using NixOS, you could probably do the same in home manager. And of course the limitation of this, which we'll get around soon, is that you have to clone the code locally somewhere and keep track of that. And that's something you have to remember outside of the NixOS config file so things can break and it's not good. So we'll fix that later, but let's see how it looks now. So if we update our NixOS config to have a call package with a full path to that default.nix file that we just created, and we have sample app C in our system packages, we can run sudo NixOS rebuild switch again. And when it's done, sample app C is yet again available to us. 
So it's great that this works on NixOS. We know it works now, but it's kind of a pain to have to rebuild your whole system just to test with this one local package we're trying to build. So I found out that if you use default.nix in a blank directory, you can just import Nix packages like we did before. And there is where you can put the code that we just put in NixOS. So this piece is where the overlay part goes. And then this piece right here is where you put the installed package name. And if this builds, you can be confident that NixOS will also build. Not 100%, but a lot of the issues that you'll see will come up in this file. If you're not familiar with Nix as a programming language, so we still have this function returning a single expression, but this let in thing, you'll see it everywhere, it lets us cheat a little bit. The let block, you can set as many variables as you want, and this is where you can basically call functions too. So if you're used to imperative programming, Nix is purely functional, but if you wanna call different things, you can call them by setting a variable to whatever you want to call. Then you can reference those down below in the output value. So really what we're returning from this function is this list here containing sample app C, but because we have this let block, we can do all kinds of stuff up here beforehand and then reference it down below. So it really opens up what you can do with a single expression. You can do this with more than one package and test if they all play nicely together. You just have to add more declarations in the let section and then add them to the list at the end there. So I added the one from the next video in this series for Rust, just an example to show that they can all play nicely together and you can make sure that they all build. So here's our default.nix file and instead of going through the whole kit and caboodle of building NixOS, we can just run nix-build. We get a result folder and we can inspect exactly what is in it. In this case, it has that same old binary, so we're good to go. Okay, how do we fix this local build thing and actually build from GitHub so that you can just paste something into NixOS and not need to clone anything? So we need to add two args to our packages default.nix. We need a source arg and a subder arg. The source is the important one. That's where we can pass in a different value for the source. Instead of the local source, we're gonna override it with something we download from GitHub. The subder is really specific to this education repo I'm using, but anyone who's using a mono repo will appreciate this as well. It basically reaches into the repo instead of assuming that you're at that root level. You can reach into a subfolder. Here's what that implementation looks like. You'll see the source and subder args have been added to our function declaration at the top. And then I'm gonna replace the source with source just because otherwise we're gonna have a naming conflict here. If we set source equals source, it'll infinitely recurse and be an error. The only other change is down here, instead of just using source, we're using the subder as well, and that's it. Now back in our testing default.nix to simulate the NixOS config that you would need, this is where the real magic starts to happen. So we updated this to have a let in for our definition of our sample app C package. So let's see what's going on there. We set the default nix, which is our default.nix downloaded file to builtins.fetch URL. So this is like curl or wget. Download the file from, here's the full path to the app. And I left shot 256 blank. We will see that you can fill that in based on the error that it throws. You can copy and paste it in. Once we have default.nix downloaded, then we're going to use it in this expression where we call package pass the default.nix that we downloaded. Remember before we passed the full path on our local system, this time we can pass the path in the nix store to the file that we just downloaded and we can run it as a nix module. It's very cool. But we're still not done doing cool things. Inside of the default nix, we can go into the function arguments and override the source, which we just added arguments so that we can do that. And the source is going to be packages.fetch from GitHub. I'll pass the page key owner. Education is the repo. Main is the ref. You want to use a tag if you're doing this in a real repo with a real application. But for now, we'll just use main. Again, we're going to see how to fill in the SHA-256 based on the error message. And then we pass in the subder, which is specific to this repo. It's in the 176 folder, sample app, source. Let's see what that looks like. So on GitHub, we can copy the default.nix for the sample app, paste it in, save it, run nix build, and you get that same output program. Similarly, the good stuff, we can copy the default.nix that grabs from GitHub, run nix build from the nixOS folder, and we see this hash error, the blank hash, and it wanted this hash. So just double click it, control shift C to copy in VS code, and go for the top SHA-256, paste it, save it, run it again, and you get another SHA error, so just paste that into the other blank SHA, the next one down, and then rerun build. Now it works and you can run the executable. Now that all that's working, we can test this out on NixOS just how we did before. Again, just throw sample app C in your system packages and then in your package overrides, this all looks the same. It's literally just copy and paste it from the other file. Then run the magic command rebuild switch 
and then run sample app C and you'll see it works as expected. And then when it's done, without having to download any source code, you can still run sample app C. That's it for this video. Look out for more like this one, a lot more in this series, but we created a C application. We'll do other languages soon. We ran it in Nix OS locally. We tested using default.nix to upgrade it to download from GitHub, and then we built and installed, indeed, the GitHub source. So this is a powerful capability. It lets you give somebody a snippet of code to copy and paste into their Nix OS file, and then they can install your application like it's nothing. So you don't have to put it into Nix packages. You can just use this method to distribute your application to your users. If you like this topic, subscribe to Take Back Tech. Very passionate about rebuilding things from scratch, self-hosting, and much more. Nix stuff, all that. We love it. So please subscribe. We're going to keep this coming.